Dr. Subhu Shastri, the founder of Newsrack.in. Tell us about the Newsrack story, Doctor, as we walk and go along. Uh, yeah, so I, I, the idea for Newsrack came about from my experience working with non-profits where they were really trying to track news in the areas that they uh, worked in. And a lot of them were uh, dealing with looking at physical newspapers, clipping and filing them away. And based on uh, looking at different organizations doing this, I thought of if there is a way to do it uh, electronically. That was still early days, I mean, 2000, that's 2004 roughly. And uh, the idea was to kind of let uh, users specify keywords in, and organize them in various complex ways and specify filtering rules and that would then uh, fetch news from various RSS feeds that uh, several news sites used to provide back in the day. And Google Alerts was not doing it effectively then? Google Alerts also had, but I think uh, Google Alerts was based on very simple keywords, which probably is okay for many people, but I think for the more complex uh, news gathering that many organizations would yeah, do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it turned out that it's probably much better to have a little bit more complexity in how, how you uh, specify keywords hmm. and how you organize them and how you uh, write filtering rules. And so that was the impetus for it. And uh, the other thing that I also tried to build in right from the beginning was uh, fetch news also from Indian language newspapers, not just English. And so I had to build... Uh, uh, so a lot of newspapers back then didn't have Unicode necessarily. Yeah. And so I had to uh, build some adapters to kind of uh, either existing tools, I don't remember the details now, I think yeah. there are other existing tools that would uh, adapt the non-Unicode to Unicode. And I then see. I would then, uh, you could then filter based on that. That was amazing, no? Because Indian language had so little support. Yeah, that's right. It was, uh, it was uh, great to be able to leverage other tools who had uh, tried to adapt. Uh, so th there are a lot. There are a lot? Yeah, there are a lot, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so Indian uh, language support was baked in, uh, in terms of you could write, you could write filters in Indian languages and combine them across. So you, you could write a filter that would look at not just English, but English, Kanra, Hindi, and Tamil if you wanted to. Yeah. As long as you're familiar with the corresponding uh, keywords in those languages. Yeah. So it was not, nothing was, uh, um, it was not based on the automatic machine trans uh, automatic translation, but more, I think, relied on user specifying filters. Manually. I see. Yeah. I remember it was amazing because I used it and I found a whole lot of stuff on it. And I would keep using it for newer and newer keywords and that those information would feed our mailing list, which we had, which we were running and things like that. Things yeah, like I'm really glad, I think, uh, that you and others were able to uh, use it. Yeah, yeah, I did hear feedback from people that those who used it really liked it. Yeah. But it was a very niche use case in that mm. for most people, I think, who had very simple filtering needs, yeah. uh, Google Alerts was probably good enough for them. Uh, but I think one of the advantages of Newstack was not just the filtering, but also it would archive, archive. archive the whole thing on the site itself. Yeah. And so I think you could share those archives over a uh, long period of time. period of time. And you could, yeah. And it was, that's how some people used it too. I think used it as an archive where they would come back and refer who back were, to it. Who were the appreciative users? Uh, there are some non-profits which used it. So for example, ESG, where I used to yeah. work, was one of yeah. the really uh, big users. And there are other researchers uh, who, I mean, who was, for example, people working in energy or... Um, uh, it helped our community radio. News. Community radio, oh, it okay. helped a lot. I'm really glad to hear. Yeah, so I think, yeah, for sure, people, some researchers, and I also heard when I was shutting it down because for uh, other uh, various reasons. Yeah. I also heard from people uh, who I didn't know about. So some journalists used to kind of use the I see. site uh, I see. Uh, for doing uh, research before they worked on the article, for so example. Sustaining these things is tough. So you shut it down about three years back, as you said. Yeah. Part what would it take? What would it take to restart it? So part of the issue was, I think, uh, I wrote that tool back in 2004 okay. and uh, it needed a lot of maintenance based on, I think, yeah. uh, as, you know, libraries and packages get upgraded for security reasons yeah. or languages evolve and support for those fall away, then the whole code has to keep, uh, you need to do maintenance on the code. And I was not able to keep up with it given the user base yeah. and given that I was also working in many, uh, doing many other things. And so my time was really split. And so I tried to keep it going for a while. I yeah. tried uh, Many years, it. quite a while. Yeah, quite a while. I, 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 
Uh, it's yeah. I started in 2004, and I think uh, I shut it down in 2020, maybe. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. 1920, something like that. 20. Quite a job. Yeah. At the moment, what does Wikipedia work take take you to? Where does it take you to? And what does it? I mean, what does it uh, take you to? What does it make you do? So I've been working at the Wikimedia Foundation for about uh, 11 years now, okay. since 2012. Okay. And I joined the foundation to work uh, on... So back then the project, uh, the foundation had launched on trying to build a visual editing tool uh, to let editors uh, be able to edit wiki pages without needing to kind of uh, use markup. Hmm. And the idea was to be able to welcome new editors. Yeah. And one of the... For doing that, you need to be able to convert the edited HTML because this uh, visual editing is based on editing HTML, not markup. So one of the things you need to be able to do is convert the HTML back to Wikitext because that's the canonical format okay. for all pages. And a lot of workflow for editors is based on doing diffs on Wikitext, which also meant that when you converted the edited HTML to Wikitext, the diffs could not have extraneous um, changes, okay. even though they are uh, insignificant for rendering. But for all the editor workflows, which based on diffs, yeah. even simple uh, changes like you know additional space or uh, removing insignificant space, or you know changing, uh, normalizing uh, code was a no-no. Right. So I think a lot of the work that we had to do revolved around making sure that we could do this round tripping, Wikitext to HTML okay. to Wikitext without. Uh, introducing what we call dirty tips. So I think that was the genesis of the project and uh, since then uh, Parsoid, I think the tool that we built is used to support several other tools like discussion tools I see. and content translation which I think is very popular is also relies on uh, Parsoid I see. and a lot of the apps both iOS and uh, Android app right now is based on underneath based on taking parts of HTML and doing additional transformations. So, Kivix, the offline newsreader, also relies on the same HTML. The plan is to eventually replace the current um, Wikitext uh, rendering engine yeah. with Parsoid, so that we have one Wikitext engine that supports all these tools, but also is used for uh, rendering pages on both the desktop and mobile and apps. And that's, the, that's where we are right now. Hopefully it should be the target is to be able to do it in a year or two. I think I we are beginning to start rolling out. It's a very long phase project. And I think we are now in uh, hopefully the uh, place where we can start rolling out some of these changes. Last question, how many people of Indian origin in the key technology side? Uh, you mean who work at the Wikimedia Foundation yeah. as employees? Or, or, or in some way helping the tech side of it? I wouldn't be able to tell you that. I think at least at the... It's probably in the tens, if not more. I think there are others, I think, who work more closely. Uh, some of my colleagues who, uh, like, for example, Shrishti, she works in uh, uh, developer advocacy and building. So I think she'll be able to probably I give see. you in I stats see. much she, better. She's here? She's she, here, she, but okay. I think, uh, uh, yeah, at least definitely in the order of tens, if not I see. many tens, if not more. I it's see. probably even larger, maybe even the hundreds, I don't know. I see. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All Thank the best. You. All the best. Lovely meeting you after so long, Subo.